Bonsoir, Ihua, Hornalen, good evening. Um, so all those languages are sisters, yeah, or brothers or whatever. I haven't been on TikTok so much lately because I got this iPad. Um, yeah, I got this iPad and I've been glued to it. Um, here it is. You can also see I cut it in half because the Princeton University Press, um, just, I, the book is too heavy, the binding is too thick, I had to mangle this with my pliers or leather man to get the binding to stay open. Anyway, um, and the letters are too small. My eyes are, I don't have glasses, but my eyes are not what they were before I turned 100. But at any rate, I've been glued to this book and it's fascinating. Um, it's called Horse Wheel Language, in case you couldn't read it. Um, uh, the horse, the wheel, the and language, and um, it's well. I'm I wasn't sure until today exactly what it was going to be. Uh, it starts off linguistic studies, and then uh, we're now getting into archaeological record, and it's kind of the history of the genus of the of Proto Indo European language family, and um, it's it's really good. It was recommended to me, or it was recommended. Um, by the way, I've, I'm, I've never made a book, uh, TikTok before, so if you like this and you want me to make more, tell me in the comments. I don't know. Um, so it was recommended on an excellent, uh, YouTube channel called Learn Hittite, and the guy who runs that is just amazing. Um, so what it is, um, if you're not sure what Proto-Indo-European is, a couple hundred years ago, there was a British judge in India, and um, he noticed, or he took notice, that Sanskrit, as well as Hindi, but he, 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 spit, he was particularly thinking about Sanskrit, has a lot of similarities between, with, with Latin and Greek. And he also said it's a much more perfect language. Um, and he surmised, after much study, that they must have sprung from the same source. That were the words that he used. <laughs> And so the, the discipline of comparative linguistics, I guess, was, 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 was birthed. And, um, and people started analyzing languages, and they realized that, yes, indeed, all the European languages are in a family, and they're all related. And, it, and if you study the way that sounds typically change, because sounds do change in a language in a predictable manner, not always the same ones, but sound changes themselves are rather predictable. If you work backwards from them, then they all kind of came from the same place. Um, yeah, and uh, for instance, a sound change, Latin father would be pater, but in a Germanic language, it would be something like father, um, or father in English. Um, so p, p, f, uh, that's a sound change that is typical. Or like, um, it's not terribly difficult, but key, 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 or k even, it's easier to say s. So the original your word for 100 was kuntum, uh, and I'm not sure if it had vowels or not. Um, and then it became satem in many languages, like Sanskrit, I believe. So that was an easier sound to make, and so it's a, it was a logical sound change. So there's the satem branch of the Indo-European language and kentum branch. And kentum is hundred. And I, is kentum a hundred in Latin? I speak no Latin, but cent is a um, hundred in French, and ciente is in this Espanol. So yeah, uh, C E N T. Um, yeah, and um, pretty interesting. And Irish. So Irish. Well, at any rate. Um, for some of the sound changes, though, to have made sense, though. There should have been um, a sound in Proto-European called a laryngeal, like mechter, um, for mother, mechter. Um, and 
they didn't see it in any of the surviving languages, but in the early 1800s, I think about 1830, the Hittite language was discovered, written in cuneiform in Anatolia, in Turkey, and it had that sound in it. Huh. And um, they're like, wow. So comparative linguistics can not only describe what we see, but predict what we haven't seen yet, but does exist. So at any rate, um, yeah. So that's what this book is about. It starts off talking about like a lot of linguistic stuff. And I wasn't sure until today because I had left, um, I was dealing with the front half of the book um, and the description of the authors in the latter half of the book. Um, he's an anthropologist. Um, and now he's getting into the archaeological record. And so it is believed that the Proto Indo Euro the people who spoke Proto Indo European originated, um, well, not originated, but kind of evolved. Um, into that snapshot of that language in uh, what is Ukraine, the Pontic Steppe, uh, the, the prairie, if you will, that goes from basically the Carpathian Mountains all the way to China. Um, and um, yeah, they were the first probably to domesticate and ride the horse, and they spoke Indo European, they spoke Indo European languages. They farmed differently than other groups of people. Um, I'm kind of, we're getting into that now, uh, where I am in the book. Um, but I should note that this book was published a while ago, 2007. And since then, uh, I'm not 100% sure about this, but it seems that DNA evidence has now corroborated this because um, it has gotten much cheaper and much more effective to uh, sequence DNA. So starting around 210-ish, 2010-ish, um, people have been able to sequence almost all the remains of people and they've been able to track movements and uh, the overlying by uh, David Reich is probably one of the leading experts in that and he has a book uh, which I can't find my book I was gonna I was looking for it to include in this video but I won't have time uh, I'll put his name in the comments but anyway they found that DNA evidence kind of corroborates this uh, because they can sequence the entire DNA and they can see who's related to who and it's it's quite amazing fascinating um, so yeah um, I'm quite enamored of this book um, so the Hittite language was one of the first and the Anatolian language because I believe there were three other ones two other ones for a total of three were so, some of the first to kind of split off from Proto-Indo-European and the next word that was the Italo-Celtic uh, branch and uh, I speak Irish like at a conversational level kind of a, a bad conversational level um, but I study I have a couple classes every week and um, one thing I often notice is how similar it is to French um, so, and I, I remarked that years ago I'm like wow it's it's got a lot of similarities with French and sure enough uh, that is one of the branches of the Proto-Indo-European languages this Italo-Celtic um, <laughs> I would say the same thing is similar to Italian or Spanish too, but I don't really speak Italian or Spanish. Um, yeah, so it's quite quite a fascinating book, and uh, I know that David Anthony has has worked with David Reich. I'm not exactly sure on what, so that's more fun stuff to to come. But this is a really really cool book. I've hardly been able to put it down. Um, it is very very dense. I'll have to say. Um, but I don't know how you could treat this information thoroughly and have it not be dense. Um, I mean, it's really amazing. They talk about wagon structures and the first wheels and the different types of wheels and what people ate and uh, all, all sorts, I mean, just all sorts of things. It's really fascinating and I can't wait for more. So at any rate, um, horse wheel language is a really cool way to spend your time. <laughs>